Hey, hey, Miss Felice here. Today we're going to be working more with writing equations, but before we do, I want you guys to do a warm up. So you'll need your notebook and a pencil, as always, so that you can do this warm up and take notes. Okay, so right now I want you guys to write each word expression as an equation and then solve it. Pause the video and hit play to reveal the answers. Okay, so now that you have done this um, in your notebooks by yourself for a warm up, let's go over the answers. 7 is the quotient of x and 4. Is would be our equal sign, so our equation is 7 equals x divided by 4. When we solve this equation with inverse operations, we should get that x equals 28 because the inverse of division is multiplication. Number two, the total of x and 12 is 32. So your equation should be x plus 12 equals 32. And then the inverse of addition is subtraction. So you should have the answer x equals 20. If you're still having trouble with this, please message me or go back and rewatch the video from yesterday. All right, so now we're going to be doing the same thing, writing equations and solving them, but we're going to be doing it with a real world application. So here in our first example, we have Caleb is X years old. His sister is 10 years older than he is. If his sister is Y years old, write an equation that relates their two ages. So like I tell you guys all the time in class, there's a lot of information here. Let's organize it. We have Caleb, we have a sister, we have a lot of variables and numbers. Let's organize that information. Caleb, what do we know about Caleb? He's X years old. What do we know about the sister? The sister's 10 years older than Caleb is. 10 years older, that's X plus 10. But we also know something else about the sister. This problem also says that the sister, the sister is Y years old. So sister is also Y. She's, she's X plus 10, but she's also Y. She's both of those things. Now, if you wanted to separate that, whoop, if you wanted to separate that information, you could. Here, let's undo that. And you could put Y down here, but you would see that sister and sister, these two people are the same. We're talking about the same sister. So if sister is Y, but sister is also X plus 10, what does that mean about these two things? They have to be equivalent. So Y has to equal X plus 10 because they're, those two things are referring to the same person. So here's my equation that relates their two ages. The sister is Caleb's age plus 10. That's what this equation is saying because Caleb is X, the sister is Y. So because the sister is 10 years older, Caleb plus another 10 years, that's how old the sister is. There's our equation. In this problem, we have something called an independent variable and a dependent variable. What does that mean? Well, we know there's two variables in here. We have a Y and we have an X, two variables. Independent and dependent. Well, we know what those words mean. Independent means that you're not dependent on anybody. It could be any number. Dependent means that this variable this uh, number depends on what the other variable was. So in this problem that we have here, our independent variable would be X, Caleb. His age doesn't depend on anything else. His age is just his age. In this problem though, we know that the sister is 10 years older than Caleb. So if Caleb is 12 years old, that means his sister has to be 22. If 
Caleb is five years old, that means his sister has to be 15. His sister's age depends on how old Caleb is. It depends on whatever X is. So the dependent variable here would be Y because that's the number that depends on Caleb's age. So these are independent and dependent variables. And most of the time, if you have a problem with an X and a Y, usually your X will be the independent and your Y will be the dependent, but not always. And we don't always use X and Y, so it's important that you're able to tell the difference. All right, let's try a couple examples. We're going to do the same thing, writing an equation and figuring out which one's the independent and which one's the dependent variables. So number one, a square has side lengths of r centimeters. If the perimeter of the square is p centimeters, we need to express p in terms of r. And then we're going to state the independent and dependent variables. Well, what do we know? We know that the side length is, what is it? It's r centimeters. And we know that the perimeter is p centimeters. But what else do we know about a perimeter? How do you find the perimeter of a square? You add all four sides together. Well, in a square, if one side is r, that means every side is going to be r. So we're going to be adding r plus r plus r plus r, which is the same thing as 4r. So in this problem, we know that the perimeter is 4r, but the perimeter is also p. Both of these things represent the perimeter. So we can put those together and say that p equals 4r. That is our equation. So now over here, I put iv for independent variable and dv for dependent variable. In this problem, the independent variable would be r, my side length, because I can't figure out the perimeter unless I know what the side length, in, side length is. So the perimeter is what depends on the side length. If I don't know this, then I'll never be able to figure out the perimeter. That's why this is the dependent variable. In number two, let's take a look down here. Isaiah has H baseball cards. Miguel has seven less cards than Isaiah. If Miguel has K baseball cards, and I should be underlining. If Miguel has K baseball cards, express K in terms of H. Okay, so. Isaiah, we know, has H. Miguel has seven less cards than Isaiah. Well, if Isaiah has H and Miguel has seven less than that, that means Miguel has H minus seven cards. But then the problem also tells us that Miguel has K baseball cards. So I can also put a K here under Miguel. So now if I know that Miguel has H minus seven cards, but he also has k cards, that means h minus 7 and k are equivalent to one another. So my equation would be k equals h minus 7. That is the equation that represents k in terms of h. All right, so now let's take a look at our variables. Which variable depends on the other one? Does the number of cards that Isaiah have depend on how many Miguel has? Or is it the other way around? The number of cards that Miguel has depends on the number that Isaiah has. So my dependent variable would be K because K goes with Miguel. The number of cards that Miguel has depends on how many that Isaiah has. Because all we know is that Miguel has seven less than Isaiah. If we don't know how many cards Isaiah has, we'll never know how many Miguel has. So my independent variable is H, my dependent variable is K. 
Okay. So I would like for you to guys to try numbers three, four, and five by yourself right now. You're going to pause the video and then when you are done figuring out the equation and figuring out the independent and dependent variables, click play so you can check your answers. All right, now that you guys have done these three problems by yourself, let's go over our work. Nathan has seven boxes of marbles. Each box contains B marbles. If he has C marbles all together, we want to express C in terms of B. So each box has B, all together there's C, but if there's seven boxes, that means that seven times B will give us our total. So my equation would be, C equals 7B. And then after we have that equation, my independent variable would be B, the number of marbles in each box. My dependent variable is the total. I can't figure out the total unless I know how many marbles are in each box. So C is dependent. In number four, a motel charges Mr. Kim X dollars for his stay. He stayed, at the, he stayed at the motel for 12 nights. If the rate per night for a room is Y dollars, we want to express Y in terms of X. So we know that the total cost for his stay is X. We know that the rate per night is Y. If we know the total, and we know how many nights he stayed, he stayed 12 nights, what would you do to figure out how much each night cost? Divide. You would do x divided by 12 to figure out how much each night cost. x divided by 12. So that means our equation would be y equals x divided by 12 to figure out how much each night cost. That's what rate per night means. So my independent variable here would be x, the amount of money that Mr. Kim spent for his stay. The dependent variable is y, the rate per night. We can't figure out how much each night cost unless we know what the total was. So y is my dependent and x is my independent. And then for number five, a bouquet of roses costs $30. We know that. A bouquet of tulips costs M dollars less. Well, that would be 30 minus M. If the cost of a bouquet of tulips is N, okay, so then this is also N, Express N in terms of M. Well, we know that tulips is N, but we also know that tulips is 30 minus M dollars. So that means that N equals 30 minus M. There's my equation. Oh, N. That's my equation. So my independent variable would be M, however much money less the tulips cost. My dependent variable would be N, the cost of the tulips. I don't know how much the tulips cost unless I know how much to subtract from the roses. I'll never be able to figure out the cost of the tulips if you don't tell me how much less they cost. So M independent and N dependent. If you need more help with this, please message me or email me or FaceTime me for your questions. I am here to help. Thank you for watching.